Dreams I dream 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 G'day guys, it's Jar here and welcome back to Dream Daddy. So like I said in the last episode, we went on a date with Craig, Matt and Hugo, who are the top three dads. So what I've decided to do is that I'm going to dedicate a whole episode to, let's just say Craig for example, doing second day, third day, and whatever's after that. Same with Matt and Hugo. So this one, we are going to do, ooh, should we do Craig last, because he's my favourite? Hmm. Okay, so let's go with Hugo, because he w we went on da a date with him recently. So we should, fingers crossed. What I'm hoping what will allow. Okay. Actually, what I'm gonna do is do Cray first because then if the game was like, oh no, you can't date the rest of the dads, then at least I've dated my favorite. We'll do that. Then Hugo, then Matt, because Matt's my second favorite. So I'm just gonna do a quick a s s save. So let's date Craig. So if you have just joined, welcome. As you know, my name is Jara. I am a single dad, a single father looking for my dream father. I'm looking for my dream daddy. Ooh, that sounded weird. I'm looking for my dream husband. So, dear future husband. Here's a few things you need to know if you want to be my one and only all my life. I really wanted to get some good quality time in with Craig. The last time we hung out, he was so busy with the kids, kids and fending off flirting mums that I felt like we barely talked. Or if I'm an American, fending off flirty moms, because we say mums. Ever since the first time we hung out, I've been trying to get up a little earlier for runs. I think I'm going to be as embarrassing as the last time. Maybe I'll be able to catch up with him now, which clearly is not me because I can't run for my life. I type out a message on Dad Book. Hey man, been training on my run game recently. Ready for a round two? Craig responds almost immediately. Dude, of course, emojis. <laughs> oh, I don't know why he didn't just send an emoji rather than type it out. Another message pops in from my inbox from Craig. Let's meet up at... Let's meet up early tomorrow for my favorite morning activity. Brunch! I type back. Brunch? What's that? You run and you get brunch. Ah, oh, so it's like capital. Yeah. Alright. <laughs> Them dad puns. Craig and I agreed to a time to meet in the morning and I have a chance to spend the evening with hanging out with my Amanda Panda. So, we're doing pizza tonight? Again? Can't we, like, have a salad night? <gasps> Dad, are you want a health kick? I... not yet? I formed the committee to examine the possibility of being on a health kick. Oh. They haven't returned with their findings. Still suspicious. Dad, if you're going on a health kick, then I have to go on a health kick by virtue of being under the same roof as you. I don't know if I have the constitution for that. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Amanda, it's time. Don't worry about it. I think it's up to her if she wants to be healthy or not. If, you know, she wants to eat chocolate all day, it's up to her. She's an adult. She can make her own decisions. The, com the committee is a smoke screen. Even if the policies change on paper, things will keep going the way they always have. City politics, you know how it goes. Ha! Diggity dog! In that case, Amanda picks up the phone and punches a few buttons with glee. Hi! Yes? Can I get an extra large pizza with chicken, bacon, extra cheese and tomatoes? And a couple of garlic sauce cups? Garlic sauce cups? That's my go. From now on, though, how about we try to limit this to four times a week? Ah. Amanda hangs up. Vicko says hey. The food gets delivered and we pop down the couch to eat some zars. Some zars? 
Just be careful, running is a gateway job. It's a slippery slope, Dad. First, you go on a couple of light jogs, and before you know it, you're conveying the garage into home gym and renewing your subscription to some sort of weekly kombucha delivery service. Question. Shoot! What's kombucha? Okay, so you aren't too far gone yet. I'm just giving you a hard time, Pops. I'm really happy you're running more and caring about your health. I want to keep you around for as long as possible. Girl, you and I are the same, I swear to God. Thanks, kiddo. Speaking of which, I'm running with Craig tomorrow. You're going to be able to keep up with him? <laughs> hey! Probably not. <laughs> we love and eat more pizza than is probably healthy in the name of carb loading. I call it a night early, so I'm ready for tomorrow. When I first started running in the mornings, it was pretty hellish. Now that I'm a few sessions in, I admit it's become a little easier, despite it always ending me dry heaving over a trash can. Is that what the runners... Is that what the runner's high is? Just dry heaving? I lace up my tennis shoes, throw on a t-shirt from a rider's summit I went to 20 years ago, and hand the door at a moderate jog. Craig is already outside with rivers trapped to his chest. He's dressed head to toe in colored coordinating running gear. Wow. I look like a total slob next to this guy. Hey, bro. Morning, Craig. River gonna be running with us? Best as she can. I can't do like a Nate voice. When I see a Nate, he's very got like a like a. Hey. Like I, I can't do his voices. It's, it's yeah. Hey, we're taking it to the limit, aren't we, kiddo? Go. Oh, I know what that means. Craig hands her a stuffed toy, which makes her smile ear to ear. That's Arnold, the capara. Sometimes it's the only thing that will keep her from stop crying. Ugh. Oh, I've been there. Amanda has a stuffed panda that she carries around everywhere. She would have a tantrum if we ever tried to wash it. It was gross. So, you've been running lately? Every morning for 30 minutes. I'm basically an ath early athlete at this point. Can't you just see these plus one biceps? And you know this this dad bod that I clearly have. <laughs> when my own character is more fit than I am. So. <laughs> well, I'll try and keep up. Mm. So where we're headed? I was thinking we'd do a couple laps around the park. Uh -huh. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Then we'll do some hill climbs up a slope. Uh, okay, uh -huh. I can probably handle that. And then we'll close up by doing some wildness survival hike riding to increase our agility. I am suddenly struck with overwhelming need to go back to my bed and watch Netflix. That sounds okay to you. I just like to throw some time murder sprints in there, but I'll go easy on you since you're a beginner. That sounds like something I'm physically nice. able to do, right? Nice! Great! Let's get Scott let's get started. Oh. Craig and I finally arrived at the park. A few other lone joggers make their way around the perimeter and river Ways enthusiastically at everyone we pass. It's a lot more peaceful in the mornings. Aside from the birds chirping and river gurgling away in the stroller, it's pretty quiet. Alright, good warm up. Hey. That was the warm up? Hey. Let's start the show! But wait, Craig reaches in his bag and me a water bottle. I fumble it, but thankfully don't drop it. You gotta hydrate, bro. Everyone, hydrate, come on. Let's grab our waters. Come on. We're trying to be healthy like our. A uh, honey Craig over here. I take a long drink from the water bottle and feel reinvigorated. Man, I don't drink enough water. Drink your water, children. Hey! I look down, pick up Arnold, River's toy, and hand it back to her. Mm. Must have dropped this. Hey. Thanks for looking out, bro. You ready? Yeah, my body's collapsing in on itself. That's my thought in my head. We finally finished however many tenths laps around the pot. I'm breathing heavily, but I can't believe I actually didn't lose Craig. He's even breathing heavier too, which makes me feel a little better. I look down at my shirt and notice that I'm drenched in sweat. Huh. Almost looks like a frowny face. That's one. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Good ass out there. I'm really impressed. You're way better than last time I launched you off a treadmill. Yeah, man, you really pushed me to my limits just now. I can't believe I held on. Sometimes you just need someone there with you to push you to do your absolute best. I'm glad I could be that guy, bro. <laughs> Who 
He was ready for hill climbs. Oh. But that's my little cheerleader. Jay, you ready? Uh, uh, uh. I think middle. Uh, you bet. Craighead is missing a separate portion of the park with a steep hill. They seem to go up forever. I strain my eyes to see some other joggers at the top. So what do we do now? We run up the thing. That looks like a lot. Jay, there's two things you need to know about this hill. One, don't stop running until you get to the top. And two, hurry points to the top of the hill. That's not the top. Ah! I don't know. Let's do this. I finally reached the top of the hill and making my way past what I originally thought was the top of the hill. Once there, I hunched over, I hunched over on top of my knees and gasped for air. My lungs are like daggers poking my ribs. I can feel my heart in my ears. <laughs> River, I'm having a moment, please. Oh boy. Craig looks like he's taking a beating as well. Huh. <laughs> so he is a human. Jay, put your arms on your head and stretch out your elbows. It'll help breathe better. It actually does. It does, Craig says. It feels a little better. But I'm still in agony. And here. Craig tosses me the water bottle again. I hydrate like my life depends on it. Thanks, dude. Phenomenal work. You feel the lightness in your head? That's a runner's high. Oh, that's it. I thought it was just, you know, dying. Want to take it slow for a bit? I would like that very much. As we catch your breath, River starts crying. What's wrong, sweet pea? Do you want to play with Arnold? Dude. Craig looks at us. Oh boy. Um, man down. I think we lost Arnold. Dude. Ricky's wailing. I have a bed in my child's toy. We gotta find him, dude. It should be simple, right? We just gotta retrace our steps. I remember a river last time at the bottom of the hill. Craig and I jogged down the path searching highlight for his stuff. Kappa Bear. Which Craig takes the time to explain to me it's a large road named to South America. Thank you. We get to a place where the river might have dropped it, but it's nowhere to be found. Looks like we got a mystery on our hands. We have to get to the bottom of this. I suspect foul play. Looks like it's a prime case for world renowned Detective Sarcasm. Oh. <laughs> it's a perfect name. Dude, it's time for a bro venture. Hmm. Bro venture! We high five and decide to jump back to the park to see if we can find any leads. High five! So it looks like there's a couple more places to check and some bros around here that we can interrogate. Sounds good. Wait, who's good cop, who's bad cop? I think about it for a second. Well, I think with your statue and over resilience, you would make an intimidating bad cop. But on the other hand, you do have an adorable baby strapped to your chest, so that softens the edge a bit. All the valid points. I think you make a great good cop because of your continued attitude and willingness to try new things. But then again, I've seen how you get when there are too many commercial breaks during a show, so you have the potential to be a scary bad cop. I don't want to watch Meet Hell in 3 minute segments with 5 minutes of commercial in between. And they're loud. The commercials are too loud. They're always louder than the actual TV show. And it's so frustrating because I just want to watch my TV show Is that leaving me on a cliffhanger. I just want to watch my show in peace without people yelling at me to buy weird, weird wiper fluids and stuff like that. Nice. Okay, some boy. Oh. Let's play moment by moment. Smart. So, where to, bro detective? So, playground, fields, or woods. I think. Let's go to playground. We make our way over to a small playground at the edge of the park. A couple of kids are playing in the jungle gym. Jungle gym? Oh, that. Whoa, my brain. While well, parents watch the nearby benches. I spot a familiar face. Look for clues, interrogate Joseph, try to calm down River. Try to calm down River. It's a pretty nice playground, might as well get a couple of swings in. What about Arnold? Maybe having a little swing might calm River down, might buy us some more time. You're right, she's about to go nuclear. This might prepare her for the possibility of not being able to find Arnold. Life is cruel and tough, but at least we'll always have swings. Craig straps River into the baby swing and gives her a gentle push. She giggles. I take a seat on the swing next to her and immediately realize I'm stuck. River seems to love that. Craig eventually helps me out of the swing and we decide to get back to the investigation. Okay, so look for clues. Craig and I, two grown adults, walk into the program and begin examining it for clues. 
There's no forensic evidence here, no strand of the Capra hairs at least. After searching fruitlessly for some time, we all look up. All the parents are staring at us. We smile and wave as we awkwardly slink away. Ask Joseph. Hey. Let's see what Joseph's up to. We jog over to Joseph, who seems to be engrossed in his book. Yeah. Joseph. Yeah. Joseph nearly dropped his book. <gasps> hey, guys. Didn't think I'd see you two here. Jay, are you exercising? Sure am, you know me. I just love to run and be healthy. That's why I have chocolate right here. That's kind of my whole thing, you know? Chocolate and healthy. <laughs> what are you reading? Oh, just a book on knots and rope tying. Oh. Okay. For boats! Boat rope. <laughs> that is not a face. No, 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 no. You, you, mm -mm. It's been more than boat, boat ropes. Right. Say, you didn't happen to see a stuffed capybara around here? What's a capybara? A large rodent that's native to South America. Oh. Just thinks for a second. Hmm. Haven't seen one around. I'll tell the kids to keep an eye out. Your kids are here? Joseph looks around. They were here a second ago. Must have gone exploring around the park. Do you know where they could have run off to? They're kids. They get into mischief sometimes. But they always come back. Alright, thanks for your help. Thanks, bro. We'll let you go back to your rope book. Boat ropes. We need to go back to... No, I think we need to move to another park. Where now, bro? I reckon we can go fields. We went to the grass fields at the center of the park, but there's not a whole lot to see. There are a few figures camped out on blankets, and the grass could hold any number of secrets. Oh man, car mister here! Um, oh. interrogate river. Wait, let me try this. It's always the culprit you least expect. I get eye to eye with river. Who still looks like she's on the verge of tears. Good cop. Hey, sweetie. Believe me, nobody wants you to find your caravan more than me. But we need more clues, and I think somewhere in that baby brain of yours, you might have something that'll lead us to the pub. So what do you say, kiddo? There. I turned to Craig. We're getting nowhere with this witness. We maneuver back to the field. Um, look for clues. We carefully climb through the fields of grass and flowers. Can't do so much beside a couple of ladybugs and a nickel. While looking, Craig calls out for me across the field. Jay! I jog over. Craig is kneeling in the grass expecting something. I approach. My heart's in my throat. As I lean over Craig, I see it. This is... Arnold's leg. I pull my hand over River's eyes. No one should be able to be subjected to this. Senseless violence. Oh, God. Oh, Who? What? Who would do this? I don't know, man. But now I think we might be dealing with something beyond our grasp. I can't look at this anymore. I turn around, trying to wipe the image of the stuff. Something strewed across the ground off my mind. Running out of time, we may already be too late. Bag and tag it. Let's keep on moving. Okay, we need to go to Carmis. Let's talk to Matt and his daughter. It was a little awkward. Like Matt too. Carmista spots us from across the way and waves. She sits down with her dad on a sunny green patch of grass. We jog over. Hey, dudes. Hey, bro. We just sat down for a picnic. <laughs> Want some snacks? <laughs> Got anything to increase my glucogen reserves? Um, we have apple slices. Thank you very much, bro. Tiny bro, but I think I should be fine. You guys working out? Good day for it. Yep, I'm the picture of health and athleticism. Grand good transition. Good, good transition, James. Not like your English. You haven't seen a stock caravan around here anyway, have you? What's a capybara? It's a large ray named to the American native to South America. Gosh, Dad. Wait a second. How do you know what a capybara is? Wouldn't happen to have hands-on experience with one recently, would you? We learned to have capybaras in fourth grade. I think it's more suspicious that you know what a capybara is. Oh. Touche. Oh my God. What if I took Arnold? What if I'm the culprit and I just don't remember? What if I like, got a concussion? I quickly checked my body for any Polaroids I might have kept on my person to remind me of who to trust and who not to trust. I saw mementos once and I'm pretty sure that's how it works. 
Nothing. But what if that's what I want myself to think? No, Jay, don't let them win. I actually got the thought. I saw a couple of squirrels over by the tree though. I don't know if that helps, but if you want to see some cute squirrels, you should definitely check it out. Thanks for the hot squirrel chip. Hot squirrel tip, crummy star. Well, we better get moving. Gotta find the Kabara before River here has a breakdown. Good luck. Let me get some apples for a road, though. Can we still hooks me up with some road slices and we're on our way? Okay, so move. I'm deduced. Where should we go next? To the woods. Into the woods. We make our way to the outskirts of the park. There are a couple of benches by the dense tree line. Looks like Robert's here by himself. This also seems like a perfect place to look for clues. Look for clues. Craig and I search through the outskirts of the woods, hoping to find anything that might lead us to Arnold. There are a couple of cigarettes and empty beer cans scattered around the thicket. This is probably the hot spot for edgy teens to hang out at night and say swears and stuff. But it doesn't look like any recent activity might happen to the capybara. This might be a dead end, partner, bro. Return to the woods. Interrogate Robert. Maybe Robert saw something. We walk over to Robert's bench. Hey, Rob. Don't call me that. Okay, hi, Robert. <laughs> Don't call me that either. Um, okay. Hey, buddy. What are you up to, bro? Thinking. This is my thinking bench. I have to get a solid two to three hours of brooding in per day. Feeling quota. Have you by any chance seen a small stuff Kabara around? A Kabara is a large road named to the South America. I know, I'm not dumb. So have you seen one? A stuffed one? Not a real one, that would be weird. Hmm. Back up. Alright, Robert, we've been nice. Help us out, I'm going off. Learn how to fight and then come back to kick your ass. You, learn how to fight, please. Well, fine, if you don't tell us what we want to hear, I'm going to spoil the season five of Long Ago Paranormal Ice Road Ghost Truckers. Oh. You're bluffing. My buddy here doesn't play by the rules. Jay would do it. Mm -hmm. Calvin crashed into a hornet. Stop! You're a monster! Robert sighs. <sighs> I haven't seen any goddamn cabra okay? Damn. Return to the woods. Here we to another part? Clock's taking dude. Where are we going next? So Joseph's kids. It's in the woods. Alright, we need to interrogate Robert again. Oh Christ, what well now? Come on, Robert. The sooner you tell us what you know, the sooner you guys back to brooding. If you don't help, I'm gonna put you in a headlock. Is that a threat or a promise? Oh, s slow down, little dude. Back off. Ah, buddy, I got a rain check on brunch. I need to get River home and calm it down. All right, good luck, bro. Thanks, bro. Damn it! I head back to the cul-de-sac alone, headed inside. God, I'm ready for a shiny gallon water nap. Hmm. I bet not Amanda's still sleeping. I crack a window, find her still in bed. Sleepily scrolling through her phone. Morning. Huh? Afternoon, actually. Right. That was brunch. Well, we had a good time with the run part. We didn't make it to the rest of the mm. port maneuver. Huh? To brunch. We didn't make it to brunch. Somehow we lost River's toy. Cover on the run. Cover is... Dad, don't patronize me about a giant rodent. I know. Sorry. Anyway, we looked everywhere for that damn thing, but Craig had to get real home before she went insane. So, the run went well. I was a little worried about your endurance. Yeah, it was rough first, but it ended up being a piece of cake. I actually felt pretty good. My leg gives out. I find myself on the floor of the hallway. I'm just gonna hang here for a while. You take time to get up. That did not go well. Yeah, that did not go well. Make sure to sweep under your tent so you don't sleep on rocks. Well, it's been a long day. I'm just about ready to pack it in after a few bites of ice cream from the freezer. I turn off all the lights and walk down the hall to my room. I wonder if Amanda's still awake. The kid needs some sleep. As I pass her room, I can hear a faint sound, but I can't make out what it is. I get a little closer. Is she... crying? I knock gently on the door. Hey, Amanda? The crying immediately stops. <laughs> Not right now. 
Her voice sounds strange. She sniffles. I need to make sure she's okay. I open the door. In the dark, I can see Amanda's outline in the middle of her bed, knees hugging up against her body. Is everything okay? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. D did something happen? No, nothing can happen. Go away. Alright, I'll leave you be. I back out of the room and close the door gently behind me. She merely starts crying again. Wow. I have no idea what's upset her. She seemed totally normal. I feel awful just leaving her to cry, but I also feel that if I tried to do anything else, it would have made her more upset. I can't stop mentally psyching through all the sorts of awful things she could be dealing with right now. More than anything, I just want her to be happy and safe. I have a hard time falling asleep, but when I do, I'm still thinking about Amanda. It's a hard situation because, like, when you're crying, you don't want people being like, Oh, what's going on? Are you okay? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? It's like, just, just let me, let me cry and I'll be fine. You know? And then other times you just want someone to be like, Hey, what's going on? And then you cry and then, you know, you lean on their shoulder and talk and everything will be okay type of thing. It's a hard situation being because it's just like, which crying session are you in? After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About ten minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops her frozen waffle on the toast and slams her freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything big going on at school today? No. Okay. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up and takes her still freezer burnt waffle out before it's finished cooking. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, okay. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time. It's usually short lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully, this will blow over and things will be back to normal soon. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at the picture of Amanda and I hanging out on the wall. In in it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knee, she would get up and try again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. Then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. As I put the white bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing ever happened. After giving a bit of thought, I decided that I... If I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse, but I have an idea. I start rummaging around for ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door, and instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline to her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. I want to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. Get scared when I know something's wrong and I'm even more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... So, just whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to, but whatever it is, just know that you have a dad in your corner who w wants you to be happy. Honey, you know I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language that we both understand. I pull out a cake from the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting has set by now. Ta-da! Dad... Oh, that's beautiful. It took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sat, and I had to start over again. This is beautiful. It's strawberry. Then it gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us some delicious cake. So. It's really stupid. What is? This whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately and there's just... I don't even know how to explain it. But like I might have to make you a chart. Uh. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? <laughs> I guess just to start from the top. So you know how Emma R is going to that fancy art school in California, right? Emma R. The one who... No. Uh, the best friend? Uh. You got it. Wow, proud of you. Anyway, ever since she got the acceptance level, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? 
She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rosie M that both of the Emmas, Grace and I, all went to a party at Mackenzie F's. On the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for a Calc AB final. Oh, yikes. So, another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, uh, have a question on um, that's a thing. What? Whoa, whoa I, I have no idea. I definitely didn't know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. So, uh, so are you. Uh. I learned from the worst. Anyway, so the, uh, the only person I told about my crush was Emma R. She promised not to tell anyone. And I didn't confront them about the party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I kept quiet, kept going about my business. And then one day I invite everyone out to get nachos at the mall. And after not texting me back for like two hours, and even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than 60 seconds, they also said they were busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really wanted nachos. Uh -huh. Totally understandable, makes sense. So I go to the mall anyway, I get to the food court and who do I see there but Grace, MP, Amara and Noah. All hanging out together and eating nachos. Without me. Yeah. What? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalators watching them and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R. Which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. No. Yeah. I know. So I storm over there and I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because of course she does. And Emma R. just like glares at me. Grace, Grace. Nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the hmm. gossipy one? Huh. I know! Grace is what no one really likes, or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything and I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is not the most quiet thing to say, but I was very angry and really embarrassed. I just wanted to get out of there. So I left. Without nachos, might I add, which was the most frustrating thing. Which only further contributed to the shitty day, and I mainly draft a super long text to the group chat asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to Emma R, asking how long the Noah thing's been going on, and sorry, that's a lot. You still following? What did Emma R say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. Emma R says, you know, let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls out her phone and reads word for word an arduous long string of text messages. Can you believe that? I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's so social life and mental well-being, but man, I do not understand what she's talking about. This is beyond me, but I try my hardest to be supportive. They were dating in secret for like months. So I told her that she's been a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, then just stop being my friend. And I was like, okay. Then she left me on red. On red. And then, wait, left me on red? What's that? Oh, like... She saw my message and didn't reply, and I know because there are read receptors. I don't know what read receptors are, but I'm going to nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am, because she at least has been kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, um, Noah texts me and is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And he tells me that Emma P sent a screenshot of everything I told her to the group chat that I got kicked out of. Alright, I think you lost me at the screenshots, but it definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's just really stupid teenage stuff. The bottom line is that everyone dropped me, half of my grade, half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. Amanda, I'm so sorry. I was expecting it from everyone else, but Emma R? Dad, she's been there. He's. Emma's been there since Dad died. Can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. Not even mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs as a remnant of her cake. Okay, I'm kind of mad that she's dating Noah. Like, what did I do wrong? Why did everyone just suddenly decide I'm not cool anymore? Okay, honestly. Listen, listen to your father for a second, right? Who has a very feminine voice, by the way. Let me say this right now. Being cool sucks. 
I've never met a single cool person in my life who wasn't down to earth and honest and sweet and kind and caring and actually gave two shits. Pardon my language there. My point is, being yourself is the best version you can be. So Amanda, obviously they're not good friends if they're not even talking to you. Unless they're planning some surprise party, but then clearly they would have said something. For your best friend to be dating someone that you had a crush on and said nothing about it, I would have been like, excuse me, you could have talked to me, or at least been like, oh, I think no, I was taking you, but oh, who, but me, but can you not tell anyone? Best friends don't hide secrets from each other, even if you say to people, I won't tell anyone. Your best friend, you always tell. Hmm. Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. As mad as I am, everyone like, I miss them, Dad. Yeah. Mana looks so dejected. Mm. I just can't take it. What would I possibly say to help? Anyway, that's it. That's the whole sort of tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Wow. I know it was pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. If I was Amanda in this situation, same reaction. I would have been so mad. If I saw my friends sitting down having nachos without me and I had said, hey, you want to have nachos? And they're like, no. I would have been like, why don't you want to have nachos with me? What did I do to break your promise or to break you guys and not want to sit with me anymore you know what did I do because I really want to know and they just say oh you're not cool enough whatever I'd be like I'm sorry but last I checked to be friends you don't have to be cool you just have to be yourself and I'm sorry I guess next time I'll find friends who are actually real because clearly they're not good friends Amanda you need to find better friends who will treat you right and who will respect you and will sit with you and laugh at you with stupid things. Will talk to you about fake husbands or talk about how they like guys or girls or non-binary pals or talk about anything you want and you feel comfortable and safe with them. Clearly if this is happening, it's not good. I think right now, give yourself space from them and things might be fixed. If not, make some new friends and that's hard it's easier said than done but you know we've met some of the dads in the cul-de-sac maybe be friends with some of the kids there I know they're younger but hey it's a start or you could just be friends on people online that works too unless you suddenly become a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time Dad, if I was a robot, I would have transformed to a monster truck long, long time ago. But seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow you upon a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. High school sucks, man. But when you get older, you start realizing the sort of people you want to associate yourself with. Do you really want to surround yourself with people who would do something like that to their friend? It takes a lot of of work to find and maintain meaningful friendships. It took me a long time to figure out that myself and I wish I'd learnt it sooner. If the other person isn't putting the effort in to show you how much they care, it's not worth it. You're not beholding, you're not a good friend and obviously they don't deserve your friendship. Ultimately I think it's, I think this is said way more about the character than it does about you because you're amazing and if they can't see that well that's their problem. Ah. I'll keep that in mind. I look down the table. Did we just eat the whole cake? Yes. Yes, we did just eat the whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up and goes to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yes. Thank you. You're always Thank welcome. You, Love you, Amanda. Ah! Welcome. You've got dads. Okay, so we're gonna do the final date. 
You know what they say about the third dates. Things get pretty serious. Are you sure this is your dream, Dad? I'm sure. Moon Pictures is hands down the best Rush album. I really hope. Treat people better than they treat you. Mm, no. I don't think that's true. I think treat people the same. It took some time for our schedules to line up, but I was finally able to find a weekend where Craig and I could go camping. He always stays so busy with work and the kids, but it's good to know that we're both able to spend time relaxing together in nature. Since our first run, I've managed to go on regular runs with Craig. I mostly do them because it seems like the only time we get to hang out. But then, the added benefit it seems to improve my health a lot. I was able to sift through the attic and find my old camping gear from college. Craig put me in charge of bringing the sleeping bags and the tent while he takes care of the food, so I double check to make sure everything is ready to go. Craig should be here any minute now. Amanda's going to be spending the weekend on a school trip to our national capital. She hasn't been away from home without me for longer than a day since she was 14. I hope she isn't feeling nervous about it at all. Hey, Amanda Panda. Amanda's in the middle of, of sitting on top of her luggage in order to get it finally zipped. Hey, Pops. Ready for your trip? Once I get this bad boy all zipped up, I'm good to go. How much did you pack? It seems a lot for two days. Oh, it's all my camera equipment, lenses, tripod, flashes, all that. Why are you sitting on the bag then? Are you even going to have time to take pictures? I'll find a way. I need to get some good shots for my series on national momentum. Ooh, what's the series about? It's one of those internet series where I re-image Disney princesses as founding fathers. <sighs> what? That sounds awesome. I'm kidding. Nobody likes Theo's. I'm taking portraits of my friends. AKA selfies. Oh, well, I'm going to be in the woods, out there in nature, you know, rough in it. Just me and Mother Nature, the old Madre Trez. Hey. Are you going to be right in your own? Yeah. I'm not going to have any signal out there. I won't be able to text or call you at all. Oh, it's alright. I'll be able to survive a couple of days without constantly updating on some content and who just got voted off the international. Haunted house. Haunters. Well, I'll miss you. And for the record, Bradley was pushed down a flight of all eight stairs by a ghost. They're really beautiful stairs. Amanda finishes zipping up the big suitcase and lugs it next to the door of her bedroom. She turns around and gives me a big hug. Relax, Dad Tron. I'm a big kid now. I can take care of myself. You're 18. You have some... You just... Yeah. Besides, I gotta share a room with Monica Sanders and two mum chaperones. The most trouble I could probably get is falling asleep with a tub of ice cream on me. Oh, well, alright, don't steal anything, okay. Send to us nicely. Fine. Promise. I step outside, holding my bag behind me. Craig's already strapping some camping gear onto the top of my modest but stylish car. He notices me carrying my equipment and hurries over to take it from me. Such a gentleman. I almost had a case of of the vapors there. Never fear those. These muscles were made for picking up heavy things and putting them in other places. Remember, it's your weekend to relax. Take it easy. I guess I can't argue with that. Everything's good with Amanda. Yep, on our way to school trip to Washington, D.C. What about your offspring? I already at Smashley's for the weekend. I'm ready to get my camp on. I load up the rest of my stuff into Craig's car and we get in. Oh, n oh no. What's wrong? I think I left my juicer plugged in. We gotta go back. Are you worried that someone's gonna break into your house and cold press some carrots? No, it's just... Uh... Try to relax, man. Let the juicer float away. Take all your worries and blend them into a pulpy good vibes. Craig takes a deep breath. Do we have everything? anything to listen to? Uh, all I have at my place is a series of CDs that guides you through a thorough and intense calisthenic workout. You want to listen to those? Um, I'm just kidding, bro. Craig hands me a thick case full of CDs. Take your pick. I thumb through pages after pages of kids sing along CDs. Oh yeah, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star takes me back. Keep going. I get to the end of the case to find in this very last slot a blank CD with Craig's handwriting on it. DJ K said. Mega Mix Volume 1? Maybe just for the trip. I think you'll like it. I pop in the CD in the car stereo and it's like I'm immediately transported to our old dorm room. 
He hits a play, and soon enough, we're both happily screaming, singing the lyrics to each song as we flew down the highway. The song was Carl's favorite. Go! The third roommate. You brought that dog home one night, and I couldn't pry you to a par. So we spent a entire semester fabricating a story about our foreign exchange student roommate who had a really bad cough and sounded exactly like a dog's bark. And then we had a room inspection. Our RA was so suspicious of us, but could never prove anything. And Carl was just under a blanket. Bless that pup's courage under fire. Man, we did some dumb things back in college. The hours flew by as we built on the tunes of whatever non-existent key our voices registered and soon enough we're surrounded by lush trees and spectacular vistas of everything amazing that nature has to offer. That's so sweet that he made like a mixtape of like their past. Like that's really sweet. I guess nowadays it'd be like making a playlist, but like having a CD of like a mixtape volume one, like that's just so cool. Like driving to the forest and like hanging out and camping. Oh that's so dope. It was good to be back out here. I wanna do this, god damn it. Real good. I wanna be here. <laughs> that scared me. I thought something like happened. I was like, uh-oh. We parked our car at the entrance to a familiar trail and load up our gear on our backs. I'm thankful that I've been working on my health over the past couple of weeks. Otherwise, I'd be driving all the hikes that's about to happen. Craig looks intently at his phone. Everything all right? Yep. Just have to fire off one last work email. Craig pockets the phone and we start off the trail. It's relatively easy, but I know it would have been huffing and puffing at this point if we went all for we all those murder sprints. I look around me and taking the trail in the trees and the animals chirping. Everything okay back there? There's no reception out here. Oh yeah, being in the middle of nowhere will do that. I recognize the look of anxiety in Craig's face. What is it? But what if there's a problem? There won't be. You train for this reception is at least a few hours. There won't be. You'll be fine. Come on, bud. Who's a relaxed boy? That's weird. I don't know. Craig. I'm a relaxed boy. That's my dude. We keep marching down the trail, but it seems like Craig is still worried. After a bit, he stops and he tracks. Maybe we should go back. We could find another campground that gets good phone reception. Craig, seriously, what's wrong? I mean, I just really nervous. My dad instincts is kicking in, and my mind keeps conjuring up all sorts of worst case scenarios. What if something happens to the girls? I don't have any signal. I have no way of knowing. Let me tell you, that feeling never goes away, no matter how old your kids are. You just gotta remind yourself that they're in good hands. Craig doesn't say anything. I give him a reassuring punch in the shoulder. Try to remember why we came out here. The plan was to get away from it all and just focus on ourselves for the little trip. No distractions, no cell phone service, just two dads relaxing in the woods. Craig looks me directly, directly, directly in the eye. No distractions, no cell phone, just two dads relaxing in the woods. We're going to have some fun this weekend. Craig and I get back to the margin. It's not too long of a hike before we get to the campsite, and we're both glad to see that we're the only people there. I can't believe you still have this tent. Found in the attic and already checked it for holes. It's seen better days, sure, but I think we'll be able to survive. Not like my English, Jesus. I dump the bag of fabric and poles into the ground. We unfold the tent in the desired spot. I hand Craig the steak. We still know how to do this, right? Of course we do. We do not. <laughs> After 20 minutes of struggling like people in a bad infomercial, we somehow managed to build an upright structure that closely represents what a tent would look like if you asked someone how to draw a picture of one with their eyes shut. I wouldn't put this up against the storm, but I think we'll have to survive for the night. We set up a couple of chairs and our cooking equipment and admire our handiwork. Bro, look at us go! Look upon the kingdom we have built. Upon this rock we shall grill out our meat and drink our brew. For we hold domination over this land. Brilliant, um, look at our camp chairs. Which we're gonna sit on. So what's next in the camp extravaganza docket? Well, now that we have a shelter settled, I think it's time for us to do some exploring. There's a waterfall a little bit up the way that I'm sure we could hike to. Let's get hiking! Craig and I venture into the woods. We amble along, taking our time to chat and admire the wildlife. 
Craig reaches out an arm and stops me. Dude, does that look like what a finger looks like? Look at where he's pointing. Oh my god, it does. That tree looks like a butt. I can't get over how detailed it is. I examine the butt tree further. The contour is perfect. It even has a back dimple. I thought we were going to have a great time camping, but this makes it even better. Craig holds back his sneaker. I aspire to have every hike be as good as this one. I'm snickering now too. Let us analyze this tree further. Craig and I share a huge belly laugh at our awful jokes. The best thing about this is that there's no door to see to tell us off on our bad jokes. We high five. Craig and I hit the trail again. It's been a long time since we've been out here, but everything seems more or less familiar. We point out old landmarks that we remember back from our college days. I think we're getting close now. Check it out. There's a clearing up ahead. As we get closer, I can hear the water running. Oh. Cresting over a hill, Craig and I are greeted by a wide clearing surrounded by trees. In front of us is a beautiful waterfall, slipping into a large body of water that runs into the river. Mouths agape with the genuine beauty of the place. We go to investigate. It's stunning. I'd love to see something like that, like a waterfall, like a pond, and like just jump in with your bathers and be like, woo, be like a stereotypical American teen. Like, I'd be so cool. You know, like, sit up on like the ledge and have like the waterfall there and like, it's like such a picture perfect moment. The old waterfall is gorgeous. Nature is so rad. Peering further, we get an idea of how deep the pool is. Maybe we could jump off of it like the old days. Ha! Huh. This old dad is happy here on dry land. Looks like you could climb right over there. We didn't even bring swimming trunks. What are you talking about? Craig Lee begins to take off his clothes. <laughs> Don't look at Craig's butt. <laughs> I mean, you don't need to look at his butt because, like, his personality is just 10 out of 10 and so is his face and his body's helping too, but, like, no, you know what? No. Actually, it takes all my strength not to look at Craig's butt. Eye contact. We're making eye contact, and I'm not going to look at the butt, no matter how much it calls out to me. Just do it, man. I see the butt. Nice. <laughs> Can't pass a good butt, you know that? You coming or what? Oh, uh, I don't know about this, dude. He's already making his way over to the waterfall. By the time I finish my sentence, when he realizes that I'm right behind him, he turns around and rolls his eyes. We've lived together for years, and I've seen your ass more times than I can count. It's no big deal. Who needs pants anyway? You got it, Chief. Let's Who needs pants anyway? This is side to oppression. Down with pants, down with the system. That's the spirit. I take off my shirt and drop it in a pile with Craig's clothes. I put the rest of my clothes on the ground, feeling exposed. <laughs> Craig and I climb up the to the top of the waterfall, making sure not to slip on any wet rocks. He reaches the peak before I do and offers me a hand to get up. At the top, we look over the cliff and take and into the tiny lake. It seems so much higher up from this perspective. Craig has always been a daredevil. He pulls some stunt in college that I'm honestly so shocked he survived. I was always the one standing on the sidelines, watching and hoping I wouldn't be bringing him home in a gurney. Man, this could be dangerous. Craig looks me in the eye. Don't think, just jump. Craig cannibals off the waterfall and into the lake, creating a huge splash. I'm worried for a moment, but he finally resurfaces under the water. Woo! He treads water and looks up at me. You coming or what? Don't think, just jump. How are you supposed to just not think? I'm pretty sure that's not physically possible. My toes grip the edge of the rock. The water looks so far away. Don't think, just jump. I run off the edge, trying to do my best with Campbell. Somewhere in the middle, it turns into a really great, graceful belly flop. I hit the water with a loud slap. I resurface when I'm Craig giggling. I rate that body, belly flop a solid 8 out of 10. Your form was lacking, but your heart was in the right place. I playfully splash water at Craig. Are you sure about that? I splash him again. You give me no choice. Craig splashes me in the face with a huge wave of water. You've awakened the beast. He launches another wave of water at me. Don't you put me in a corner here. Don't you put a wild animal in the corner. Uh, squirt water at him with your hands. Dunk him. 
I launched my Craig and managed to get him in an arm lock. Time for the finishing move! I summoned my dad to lift Carl out of the water. Hey! I drop him down for a splash. Craig bounces out of the water. My turn! Oh no, it seems like Craig was simply allowing me to pick him up and dunk him. He grapples me with his clearly superior muscles and quite literally tosses me across the water. I emerge from the water devastated. You think I did all those pull-ups just to look good with my shirt off? Nah, bro. These arm cannons are dad launches. <laughs> Craig does a playful flex for me. Damn. Craig, choose, please. Oh. Craig thinks about it. Yeah, sure. We shake hands. There is peace. Man, that jump was such an adrenaline rush. That's so scary now, huh? I race you to the top. We run all the way up the slippery rocks and Campbell off the waterfall again. What a rush. Good form of that one. Wanna go again? Um, you know what? The same age we had now use, we climb back up the top of the waterfall. I'm brave enough to try a flip, which I'm sure looks incredibly graceful as I barely flop into the water. Phew! Man, this is fun. Got one more in you? I live for danger. It takes us a little bit more time, but we get to the waterfall and both do our best running jumps in the water below. Alright, I think that's my limit. We should get back before it gets too dark. You can't be enough for more alive, but you're right. We probably should head back. We go to put on our clothes back on and notice that they're soaking wet. Maybe a splash fight wasn't the best idea. <laughs> it's okay. We got a fire going in no time. We can dry off and get some dinner, okay? Sopping wet. We hike back to the camp and unpack everything we need for dinner. Craig pulls out a couple of steaks and some chopped potatoes in tinfoil. Oh, yum! Literally, my favorite food is steak and potatoes with like a nice, like buttery sauce. Oh, yum! You ready for a feast? Hey, man, take a seat. The Craig train is pulling to relaxing station, and I'm your conductor. Let me cook for you. Absolutely not. Cooking is the thing that relaxes me the most. I'll take it from here. Craig cooks now? I remember how his entire sophomore year diet consisted of microwave mac and cheese, but not microwave. But not microwave and having trouble believing that things he said. Hmm. At least let me start the fire? Sure, let me just grab my matches. Craig reaches in the back. He rummages around in his bag, pulling things out and checking every part Uh oh. I know I've had to. Craig checks another bag and still can't find it. My stomach grubbles and now I'm more actually aware of how cold and where I am. We really need to get this fire started. Okay, well, it's not the end of the world. Gosh, I'm so stupid. I swear I've had to. I'm sorry, dude. Don't be. We can figure this out. We can start a fire. We're smart, guys. I mean, how hard could it be? I've been watching plenty of survival programs on TV, but naked reality TV star can do it, so can we. We'll need some wood. I gesture to a tree around us. There's no shortage of that. And some tinder. We can make that work. And then I think some ancient alien that are supposed to come down by and give us advanced technology or renovate a house, depends on the show. Craig and I gather a variety of wood, bark, and moss until we have all of the materials that we could conjure up to make a passable looking campfire. Just sad fire, right? That's the fun part. The sun is just setting and a cool breeze rushes the leaves off the trees around us. We have to work quick. I've done this in the past. And I know I can figure it out. Just give me a sec. Anyway, I can help. Give me some moral support. At least my spirits will make this fire happen. Um. You never knew a better Craig. You can do it. Clear eyes, full heart. Can't. Uh, not make that fire. You can make the fire, Craig. That's the stuff. Eventually, Craig is miraculously able to get something going. He blows on the embers and gently places the glowing moss into the base of the pit. Soon enough we have a nice little fire going. Way to go man! We're old, old outdoorsy fellas. Hooray for not dying. I take a seat in one of the lawn chairs Craig bought and cozy up to the fire warming up my hands. Relax man, take it easy. Let me handle dinner. I would just Craig stokes the fire and sets up the makeshift grill for the steak. After all that hiking and swimming and fire starting, I'm a bit I'm able to relax a bit. With the sound of crickets and the scent of steak filling the air, I actually feel pretty calm. Craig expertly sears two steaks in a pan. He's been heating up on the fire, crackling thyme and a crushed ginger over it while blasting them both in butter. Oh, yum! Damn, I'm hungry. Well, I didn't know he was actually good at cooking. The fanciest I ever saw him in college was when he started 
sprinkling the seasoning pack onto dry ramen and eating it straight up. When did this happen? You used to eat cereal in the morning with beer instead of milk. I grew up, I guess. I think they're just about ready. Craig pulls the seat onto a paper plate and sets them aside. I start to reach for one, but Craig smacks my hand away. Dude, let them rest. It'd be more flavorful that way. I patiently return to my seat, eyeing the steak lonely from a distance. They smell incredible. Craig prepares a side, a side salad for us in the meantime, sprinkling feta cheese onto freshly chopped greens. He plates it in, but he plates it next to Janice Power roast potatoes covering olive oil and rosemary. Oh my god, I am in love with Craig. Bloody hell! Literally, that's all of my favorite foods. <laughs> oh my god, I'm in love with this man. Bloody hell! Once it's all ready, we sit down by the fire and dig in. Everything tastes okay. I'm in heaven. Jesus. That's what I like to hear. Remember how for an entire semester we would eat burritos for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? It's so hard not to go back to that. Look at you now, man. You have kids. A great job. And now you cook like a vengeful wish wizard whose arch nemesis are microwavable food. I'm really impressed with how much you've gotten your life together. <laughs> but there's no humor in it. I'm glad you think that. Hmm... Talk to me, honey. I glance at Craig while he picks at his salad. He's really grabbed his baby face, but there's something about his expression that makes him seem so much older than he is. Such a maturity he didn't have in college. He looks exhausted. Uh -huh. You okay? Yeah. Come on, dude. I know you long enough to know when I've seen you down. I'm tired, bro. I think being out here is making me realize just how drained I feel. You work really hard, Cray. It can't be easy. I have to. For my girls, I volunteer at their school, I cook healthy meals for them, I do everything I can to make sure they're safe and happy. And with them with mom, I'm always working overtime so I can support them. And then you work out a lot so you can crush anyone who stands in their way. That? And I don't want to fall into my old habits. I need to set a good example for my girls. Everything I do is for them and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it seems like it's bleeding you out dry. If that's what it takes to raise them, well, it's worth it. Craig, buddy, I know where you're coming from, but you got to take care of yourself too. And I think I'm starting to learn that balance, trying to find that balance of taking care of myself because I've been trying to take care of everyone else for so long and, you know, work over time constantly with everything I do where, like, I'll finally sit and relax with my friends and I'll be like, Crap, I'm so tired. I'm just constantly exhausted. Nice. And it's not good. I, I do though. I eat right and exercise and it's not what I meant. You're too little butter you're too little butter on the to on too much toast, you know? What? You're spreading yourself too thin. Life needs balance. It's great that you care that much about your kids, but can't neglect your own needs because you're too busy taking care of everyone else's. Oh. You matter too. It's just, I know I can provide for my family, but take a step back and look at everything objectively. I know I'm doing right by them. I think that's the problem, is when you stop being a certain way and doing a certain thing for so long, it's hard to step back and be like, yeah, I'm not doing this right. Or, yeah, I'm destroying myself. But, but, hey, it's fine, you know. I'm protecting everyone else and making sure everyone else is okay and making sure everyone else is fed and, you know, their education's okay and that they're not stressed constantly and they're not, you know, wanting to hurt themselves or anything like that. And it's a constant battle of fighting between what's... I should be doing how much time I put into stuff and how much time I put into other people and you know I should be able to put in time to myself I should be able to be like, oh I'm gonna have an afternoon where I can just sit relax read a book I can't do that I can't be like oh I'm gonna take a St. John night off because I'm you know it's like oh if I do that I'm letting the team down I'm letting myself down I am letting all the kids down and I just can't do that and you know 
same like I can't like obviously I can't be like oh I'm not gonna do homework so I can give myself a better health and well-being that can't happen because that's my education I'm thankful I have an education I'm thankful I'm getting an education um you know I'm doing my cert 3 in health right now I'm doing year 12 I'm also teaching first day and you know it's getting to the stage where I'm doing something every single night I'm out of the house every night learning you know I'm not going out partying or anything like that not that I've ever been invited to a party but like you know I I ha I'm constantly to my friends I'm like are you okay talk to me you gotta let me know if you're okay tell me everything's all right you know constantly in effect I'm mothering them all the time I'm I see myself as a mother you know I, I gotta make sure everyone's okay I gotta make sure everyone's fed I gotta make sure that no one is depressed or down or sad or if they are I talk to them and I make sure I can find a way to brighten their day you know but then I've started to slowly realize that yeah I might be doing it for everyone else but what about myself you know I, I don't look at myself and be like oh I'm having a down day you know what am I gonna do to fix that I'm just like nah I'll ignore the negative thoughts for the moment because I got other priorities right now which is my friends are down or I got other priorities which is you know I got I got people to look after I got things to take care of I gotta do homework I gotta do assignments I gotta do booklets I gotta make sure rosters are done I gotta teach I gotta make sure friends are okay and all of this stuff and it's just like finding that balance is ridiculously hard and I thought I had it for the longest time but something else will always tip it and make it out of whack and out of balance it's just trying to find that balance is really hard and frustrating sorry I went on a tangent but it's what I've been working on <coughs> like if you didn't know this year my objective is to focus on my mental health and well-being so if that means talking to people more being like hey look I'm not okay help me then I'll do that um, originally I thought it would be like oh I'll try and be positive all year I can't do that I'm gonna have down days and I need to accept that they're down days you know anyway but I can't explain it man there's always that voice in the back of your head telling me that I need to do more it's like it's never enough for me every time I try to relax a voice keeps telling me that I don't deserve it to be honest I feel guilty about being out here Craig oh my god you and me minus the health part you are me I, I constantly have a voice in my head being like you're not good enough you need to do better you need to be doing more and stuff more and more and more and that's why I'm constantly accepting stuff and I'm like I physically don't have time to accept these things but I'm going to anyway because the voice in my back of my head is like you can do more you can be better you can not be the shitty person that you are and it's it sucks because you can't just be like oh ignore the voices in your head because that would just be like oh ignore that you're breathing you know you can't do that Craig you're trying your best and you're doing an amazing job the fact that's a fact but even if you weren't Hi. you would still deserve happiness do I though? Oh. I had this conversation with my friend because I was going through a time where I felt like I didn't deserve happiness. I didn't deserve the friends I had. I didn't deserve the boyfriend I have right now. I don't deserve to be happy. And it was a tough because, you know, how do you say to your friend, hey, I don't feel like I deserve you because I feel like that I'm not good enough to be your friend I don't feel good enough to have you in my life I don't feel good enough or worthy enough to have you in my life or any of my friends how do you say that to someone you know I understand you Craig more than you think I look at Craig and think about what a good friend and an even better father he is. He's compassionate, he's hard work, he's relentless positivity. He encourages everyone to be the best version of themselves. He makes me want to be a better person. If you could only see yourself the way I see you. Greg beams. He gets up and walks over to his supplies. 
Come on, I brought dessert. Oh? Are you going to use the campfire to torch the top of the of some creme brulee? What? I know a little to nothing about cooking. Harry puts out a marshmallow. Well, you still know how to make s'mores, right? I think the more important question is, do you know how to make s'mores? As I recall, you used to just completely back the marshmallow. Oh, I stand by that. It's charred on the outside, but gooey center is preserved. Brutish. Craig throws a marshmallow at me and I catch it in my mouth. Pro move. We used to be able to do that at a great distance against a win disadvantage. Give me a week, week of practice and I'll be competitive again. Craig and I sit in the warmth of the glow of the campfire, watching embers float up towards the sky. The stars are so much brighter out here. Hmm. Yeah. I miss that, Jay. Me too. We stay here until it gets late, half remembering stories from college. We watch as the fire dies and eventually cl clamber into the tent. We call into the tent and I throw on my sleeping bag. Wait, where's the other sleeping bag? I look around for a second. Oh. Oh no. I must, have, I must have left it at home. It's all yours, dude. I'm sorry. I just curl up over here. No way. Here. Craig unzips the sleeping bag and spreads it out so there's enough room for both of us to lay on top of it. Night, bro. Good night, bro. I roll over and we face away from each other. Without a blanket, it's really cold. I shiver and without realizing, I find myself nestling closer to Craig. I'm sure he won't mind. He turns over and I can feel his breath on my neck. It's hard to focus on anything else. I turn over and try to get more comfortable. I open my eyes to find Craig's face only a few inches away from my own. For once, he looks at peace. His eyes flutter open. His hands find a place on my wrist. I'm not sure who leads in first, but suddenly we're kissing. We look at each other and my heart's racing. Oh, man. Craig? I got strong feelings we were. Feelings I can't deny anymore. Bro... Me too. <laughs> I run my hand through his hair, then down to his chest. Craig brings me closer, wrapping his arms around me. I feel so secure. You know, talking about old times is fun, but I like making new memories with you. That was slick. I like that. That that was good. That was good. I smile, tracing lines of his hips with my fingers. We kiss again. I'm not worried about us getting co too cold tonight. That day, oh, moved me so much. Bro. That was... Bro. <laughs> Nate. <laughs> it's perfect. Oh. That would be like the ultimate date. Like, down the track type of thing. Or even just like as a friendship thing. Just all like hanging out by a campfire or camping together. Just chilly, talking, having stories, roasting marshmallows. It'd be cool. Woo! I think I have everything finally set up. Amanda should be here any minute now. I think that's her car in the driveway. Okay, got out natural. Be cool, Jay, be cool. Amanda walks to the door with a suspicious look on her face. Hey, Dad. Hmm. Off to a good start. Something's fishy. Rats. Sorry, so we need some feds. What? No, I uh, uh, had a crab cake sandwich for lunch. That's probably it. You're allergic to selfish. Oh. No, oh, no. I forgot. Again. Dad. Oh, gosh. I'm gonna be sick. What have I done? I'm kidding. You're right. I have a little surprise for you. Yeah, I can tell. You're bad at lying. Amanda, my dear. Would you care to join me in the kitchen? Father? It would fill my heart with glee. I lead Amanda to the kitchen table where a present lies covered under a tablecloth. It's nothing special, but I wanted to get you a little something. You graduated high school last week, and I know you told me not to make a big deal about it, but. Aw, Dad, you. I try and whip the cloth off the table. Amanda's jaw drops. No way! I figured you probably won't be able to get cable in the dorm, so I thought it might be nice to take a piece of home with you. A DVD box set of long haul paranormal ice road ghost truck. This is all 19 seasons and bonus materials, including commentary with actual ghost features on the show. Dad, I love this. Thank you. She gives me a big hug. I'm glad you like it. Hey, you want to hang out with me in the backyard for a bit? Toss the old pig skin or something? Totally. I follow Amanda to the back door. <sighs> what? 
You tell me not to make a big deal, but you seem to have forgotten that my entire mission in life is to make a big deal of your accomplishments. So, consider this your graduation party! Surprise! Dad! Everyone's here! Well, yeah, everyone yeah. to come and support you. Is that a mac and cheese bar? Sure is fully customizable down to the type of mac. And there's ice cream cake, the good kind with the crunchies in the middle. I don't know what to say. Don't say anything, just go have fun with your pals, alright? So proud of you, Amanda. Amanda smiles and rushes to her friends. I should make the rounds and make sure everyone's having a good time. But first, mac and cheese. <laughs> Joe! Uh. Brian, you made it! Uh, don't pass up good mac and cheese. What do you think of the party? It's not bad. Uh. Just not bad? Yeah. It's not bad. Don't let him bet you, don't let him bet you. Thank you for the lovely compliment. Daisy trots up. Hi! Amanda's dad! Hey! Brian's daughter. See? See how that feels? This is a really great party. Thank you so much for inviting us. You're very welcome. Tiny child who knows how to pay a compliment. Brian, now look, guys, this isn't over. <laughs> Looks like you've settled to the neighborhood quite nicely. <coughs> <coughs> Nose. Yep, couldn't have asked for a better cul de sac. Well, I'm glad. Hopefully, we'll see more of your church friends. We have a big schedule planned for the rest of the year. Sure thing, Joseph. Maybe if you aren't doing anything later, we could. Hang out sometime. Sure, Joe, so that'd be great. Well, see you later. Hugo comes hey. up to me with a pal of mac and cheese. The perfect cheddar to mac ratio. Beautiful work, Jay. Thanks, Hugo. You know, I'm really pleased to see Amanda going to a dream school. I'm glad she turned it around for finals. Me too, that scholarship money will really help. Amanda walks by and pretends to not see Hugo. Amanda, come say hi to your old teacher. Hey! Congrats on graduating. I know you're going to do great things at art school. Pew pew! <laughs> yeah, thanks! Mana starts to back away. Wait, I just realized that you're not my teacher anymore, so I don't have to be afraid of talking to you. You no longer hold power over me. You're right, go forth, adult. I can no longer give you detention. Yeah! I'm gonna break everything and I'll. I want, there's nothing you can do about it. Are you still mad about the time I gave you detention for breaking my globe? Yes. Nope! And I'll have you know that globe didn't even fit through the basketball hoop in the first place, so, huh. She'll fit into college just fine. Hey. Uh -huh. Hey. Mm. Robert gestures vaguely to the snack table. Good stuff. <sighs> yep. Oh. See you later. Hey, man. Matt! My bro! Let me know when Amanda leaves for college and I'll have a fresh batch of right said banana bread ready for her. Thank you. I know she'll love that. What a splendid garden party. My deepest thanks for extending an invitation to my son and I. This icebox cake is a divine. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Good cake. Thanks for coming by. Hey, it looks like Amanda's hanging out with Brian and Hazel. Let's see what they're up to. Okay, Brian, think of a shape. Hazel, what's she thinking of? Square. Briar? Star. We'll get it next time. Mana leads in closer to Briar and Hazel, lowering her voices. Listen, you guys can be real with me. If you're downplaying your psychic abilities, I want you to know that you can trust me. Heck, even think of me as a third twin. Mm -hmm. Amanda, that's a triplet. You know, Dad. You know, Dad. By the time I'm done with these kids, we're going to be fishing. Finishing each other's. What? You didn't finish your sentence. What are we going to be finishing? Each other's sentences. Nah. See? Third twin. I have to go. Sorry, it's just, it's, it's beautiful. Hmm. As the party starts to wind down, I say, take a seat next to Craig. The sun is setting and everyone seems to be eating their fill. Bro. Bro. <laughs> this reminds me of the parties we used to throw. 
Fewer keg stands, of course. Probably for the best. I don't want to get my hit replaced after a party trick goes wrong. We can leave the keg stands in the past. Craig sighs. You doing okay? Yeah, dude. I'm alright. I just can't hang for too long. I get back home and answer some emails. What happened to relaxing, remember? I am relaxing right now. Where? Nice. Sitting on a bench. Yeah, well, I could be standing. See? Relaxing. Great, you gotta take better care of yourself. I care about you and I want you to be okay. I appreciate it, bro. But I'm fine. You're a good friend, dude. A good friend. Do you ever wish that maybe we were more than friends? Oh, uh, bro. Uh, I I'm sorry if I gave off that impression. T to be honest, it's kind of wondering the same thing. But I don't have time for that right now. I think we're just better for friends. Uh, yeah. I guess I can do friends. Craig calls up. Alright, buddy. Hey, I'm moving. Thanks for inviting me. Let's hang soon, yeah? That would be nice. Craig jogs out of the yard. Man, the last guests begin to make their way out of their party. Amanda walks over and sits down next to me. Killer party, pups! Mm -hmm. Well, can I say I was inspired? So, I uh, also have something for you. For me? Why? Not to be completely genuine about my feelings for once or anything, but growing up wasn't easy. But it could have been a lot harder if it wasn't for you. Dad, you've been there for me through everything. There's, there's been times in my life where you were my only friend. I was really scared of going to college and being so far away from you, but I realized that everything you've done for me has been preparing me for this, and I'm ready. I wouldn't be who I am without you today. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. I swear to God, Jay, if you cry again. You're the best, Dad. I love you. And I'm crying. <laughs> Always. Th oh. Anyways, that was enough emotional moment really for one day. Present time. Amanda hands a tiny wrap package. I tear the wrapping off to find a frame picture of me and Amanda. It's hmm. us. Kind of shocking. All of our photo albums are just pictures of me, huh? I figure we need at least one together before I leave. Amanda. Thank you. Watching you grow up has been the happiest experience of my life. You're such a talented, intelligent young woman, and I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Knock him dead, gorgeous. Always do. Amanda and I share a hug. This is only the beginning, Pops. Plenty more memories for us down the road. Memories to make and stuff to break, right? Oh, I'm going to break so much stuff intentionally and unintentionally. You're probably going to have to pay for most of it. It would be my honor. Amanda and I bay... Amanda and I wave bye to the party goers as they leave. We sit together and watch the sun slowly slip down beyond the horizon. I'm glad you made some friends. Ooh. Yeah. I know that's maybe not what you were looking for, but these people care about you. I love you, Dad. We always have each other. You're right. It's going to be hard at first, but this is the next chapter in our story, and I would be nervous about it, but I know that you're always going to be looking out for me in the same way I've always been looking out for you. Team sarcasm. Team sarcasm. That was beautiful. Honestly, that was beautiful. I'm kind of sad that, um, what is it? Craig and Jay didn't get together, but like. Yeah! Barry! Nathan! Woo! Aaron! I know as well. Um, I don't. I'm. Ah, oh, Dan and Susie, I know. The archery. Gang rumps and Nate wants to battle. Woo! Anyway, if you guys liked this part, oh, I can do that. Oh, that's cool. Build a dad designer. Nice. Mini games. Mini games. Penguin mini game. Dad battle mini games. Radio. Piano. Wheeling. Ski ball, golf, fishing, concert, gargoyle, music. Mm, this is not DV but pop. Jeez, a lot of people went into this and I'm really happy. Play testers, special thanks. Aaron, yeah. It's so cool. And all of our dads. 
That's cute. a game from Game Rose. Woo! And that was Craig's root of Dream Daddy. And I hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you did, let me know in the comments below. And yeah, it, it's so weird that Dream Daddy's. Well, Craig's route is done. Whoa. But a beautiful ending it was. Anyway, dry out. See you guys in the next video. Sarcasm out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. See ya. I'm. I, that wasn't. That wasn't like the best thing ever. And I.